All right, guys. Welcome to the module ten of the Facebook marketing course, which basically talks about building brand awareness with Facebook. So, what is the goal of this particular module? The goal is to let your customers know about your business. Yeah. So, this is like like the name suggests. This is about creating brand awareness, which in other words means letting customers know about your business and also, you know, let them love your business. So, make them to like your business. That is that. That is the goal of this particular module. So now, why brand building? Okay, why is brand building necessary? So why should a business invest in building awareness and preference? That is the that is the first agenda. So you know, as we all know, there is a marketing funnel. All right, there is a funnel which you know typically consists of awareness, consideration, and conversion. Awareness part basically is concerned about letting people know that you exist, letting people know what exactly you offer. That is that is what comes in the awareness part, because obviously if if people don't know about your business, they will not reach the uh, till the conversion stage. Yeah, so in order for them to reach the conversion stage, you have to make them aware. So awareness is the first first stage of the funnel where you just introduce yourself to the to the people, to the to the target audience. Yeah, and make them aware about what your services or what your products are are all about. Right. So you want your audience to know that your business exists. in the consideration phase it's about you want to uh, you, you wanting to share what is special about your business to influence your audiences consideration decision or decision making yeah so in the consideration stage it is you know it is about positively making an influence on the on the users uh, buying decision and the third is the final stage where the actual conversion takes place where you want to drive the audience to become your customers right choosing your business over others if you if you see all of these these uh, three uh, you know three stages are extremely crucial you know they are they are very interdependent on each other right so and you cannot do without any of these stages you know when if if consideration is not there or if conversion is not there the final result that we want will not will not happen and hence you know we have we start with awareness we go to consideration and then we go to conversion all right So for our uh, discussion, for the scope of this discussion, we are going to look at the awareness stage, right? The 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 first stage where you make business, where you make people aware about your business. So now, before you start, what are the necessary elements that are needed before you start uh, start the awareness activities? Let's look at that. So you should have an existing Facebook page, yeah. You will need a Facebook page to start your awareness activities. Then you will need Uh, the page should have a vanity URL. All right. So the page, when you create it, you know sometimes by default the URL is is has a lot of numbers in it. It is not a properly set URL. Yeah. So you should you should set a proper Facebook vanity URL so that it is the 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 page is very easy to market to people. Then complete the page information section. So basically fill out the necessary details of the page. You know the description. the timings whatever it is the website link all of that needs to be completed and the last is call to action button on page so there is a call to action button which is a button which can be customized so it is it is that button which is the only button that can be customized depending on your objectives so this button typically appears you know just below the cover photo so you can customize this button and it, and it is necessary that you set this button set this call to action button before we start our activities now what should you be thinking about so firstly what kind of creative assets do you uh, do you have right so you know we have we as businesses we have different assets in form of creatives in form of content in form of videos right so what kind of assets do you have because they will be necessary in this particular stage all right uh, the second is what is your business's usp so what is the unique selling point what is it that you want to uh, want the people to look at when you interact with them for the first time so is it excellent service is it unique product etc so the business needs to be on the same page or the business needs to have have this answered figure out and then only can the business effectively communicate with the users by using this particular usp and the third is obviously what if who is the target audience who are we actually talking to okay working women fathers etc so this obviously we need to know so basically we need to have all of these things sorted before we actually start the module So when you log on to Facebook, if you're an existing advertiser, yeah, you will see the ads manager or the adverts manager option. 
Yeah, so when you play, when you click on that, you go to the ad dashboard. Otherwise, if you're a first time advertiser, just click on create ad or create AdWord. Alternately, you can also go to the drop down that is there or at the top right from where you log out. The same drop down will also have an option of creating ads. So you can use these multiple ads, sorry, these multiple options to go to your ad manager. So now if you're an existing advertiser, when you go to the ad manager, this is how the dashboard actually looks like. Yeah, and when you go to the ad manager, you need, you'll need to click on the create AdWord button. So let me just show you what happens on the dashboard itself. So like I said, when you go to your account, you see different campaigns that you have executed in the past or which are still going on. And then at, at the top right corner, you see the option of creating ads. So when you click on create ads, these objectives appear. All right, so the, the funnel will seem familiar to you, the awareness, consideration, and conversion funnel. Yeah, and there are these different objectives that Facebook allows us to use for all our marketing activities or for all the paid campaigns. So out of all the objectives that we saw, which ones are actually relevant as far as brand awareness is concerned? So these ones, all right, so brand awareness, reach, engagement, so in engagement, we have post engagement, or other in, in other words, you can also call it as boost post and then video views. So these are the objectives that you can use for, for getting brand awareness. So now let's look at the targeting, targeting audiences. Yeah. So how can we target the relevant audience for our brand awareness campaigns is, is the next agenda. Now, typically there are three ways in which you can, you know, target users on Facebook or all your targeting initiatives can be divided into three categories. One is the core audiences. So basically you can uh, target audiences, uh, you know, with, uh, with a few filters like, you know, demographics, interests, etc. So we'll look that in detail, look into that in detail. The next is custom audiences. Custom audiences are the, are the existing customers, right? Depending on the data that you have, depending on, I mean, the customers that, yeah, that have interacted with you previously, those are the custom audiences. And the third is the lookalike audiences. So lookalike audiences are the ones which, uh, you know, Facebook helps you to create depending on the existing audiences. All right. So now uh, we'll understand each of these in detail as we go ahead. So let's start with core audiences. All right. So now what does core audiences mean? It basically means that by, by using the core audience targeting features, you can target people based on their demographics, location, interests, and behaviors, right? So now Facebook has its own source. So Facebook itself has a lot of information about the users, obviously, and then there are partner categories as well, which have helped uh, Facebook create a lot of information and they have enabled Facebook to categorize users into different information buckets. So now these, this information is basically used when, uh, uh, when a particular brand, you know, is, is targeting or is, is using Facebook ad advertisements. So let's say, for example, if you want to target someone who is interested in football, Facebook already has information about all the people who are interested in football living in a particular location based on their previous activities, based on the user's previous activities, Facebook knows that this information and hence your advertisement will be shown only to person to that person who is interested in the topic of football. So you can target using based on the interest. So football was an, was an example of interest, then location, you can target based on the demographics and also the behaviors. So look at the sample segments. Okay. So people, so based on interest, location, demographics, and behaviors, you know, let's say, for example, you can target people who are interested in gaming or for example, people who are interested, who are living in Singapore or people who are newly engaged people who have, who are using Android phones or people who are, you know, are interested in premium brands. So all of these features or these, these are the sample, uh, you know, segments that you can, you can reach out to by using these these different targeting options. So now isn't this powerful? Yeah. So now they, the Facebook targeting options are very accurate and they're also very, very diverse. All right. So accuracy and diversity, both are, both are high. So demographics, what does demographic targeting include? Demographic targeting basically includes in you know, life events. So let's say wedding, you know, it, it includes things like school graduation, education, yeah, relationship status and more. Yeah. Then you have interest. 
so people who are interested in particular topics let's say fitness and wellness shopping and fashion etc you have behaviors so let's say people who are expats or based on their purchase behaviors or on the, on the travel behaviors then location so you can target people based on the country that they live in the state that they live in and they can, you can also target them using you know the the city the province and also the postal code so you can also in fact target people specific areas in a city yeah and the last is you know connections which means that you can target people who have liked your page or you can choose to exclude the people who have liked your page or you can target uh, you know people who are friends of the people who have already liked the page and so on so the the target audience demographics targeting so tar sorry uh, select target audience demographics so demographic targeting features are you know available on the dashboard in in this way so there is location there is age there is gender and then there are languages right so languages you can also target people based on the language that they speak yeah then there is uh, interest like you can see there you can go deep into interest and behavior targeting so in the detail targeting feature there is demographics there is interest there is behaviors and then there are there are more categories yeah so let me just show this to you on the facebook dashboard itself so like we discussed you know the location is the is, is a filter yeah then you can target people based on their age okay so i've gone to oh, by the way i've gone to the manager and i've come to the audience section where you can select the audience so there is location there is age there is gender there are languages and in detail targeting there is what there is demographics interest behaviors and more categories now you know all of these so for example if i expand demographics that will have a second degree or a second level yeah so all of these you know are very very detailed even if i open just one option let's say education that will also be very very detailed and let's say in education you can target people who have based on the you know degree that they have or people who are let's say who have a professional degree or uh, you know who have a masters degree and so on and so forth that is just one option that to in demographics so there are many such options in demographics there is interest there are different you know interest categories like you can say business and industry entertainment fitness and wellness science uh, technology sports and outdoors etc there is behaviors so you know we can target people based on the mobile device that they use the travel habit their purchase behavior etc and the last is more categories so all of these targeting uh, features enable the brands to reach out to their audience in a much more effective way because these these uh, options are very very powerful and the last is the connections so you can you know choose to let's say if you want to exclude people who have liked your page or if you want to show your ad to only people who have liked your page you can do so by using the connections option so this was all about core audience targeting now the next is the custom audiences right so custom audiences is what custom audiences is basically you can target people that you already know so there are people on facebook to the right if you see and then you have you know your own data so you have your crm data so let's say you have your email ids or let's say you have the you have the you, there is a lot of traffic on your website right so people are visiting your website so you can you all they already know you so you can reach out to them right so custom audiences basically allows you to reach out to the people that you already know who are there on facebook so you know the overlap between the two yeah the overlap between the two the overlap between the people you know and the people on facebook is what custom audiences enables you to target right that is that is the, what the whole idea is so now how can you create custom audiences so you can create custom audiences through uh, you know these these uh, uh, these these four ways and for for our discussion you know customer file website traffic and engagement on facebook are the ways in which we can create custom audiences all right so let's understand them so what is customer file so when you have a file of uh, you know users with their email ids right so when you have that kind of a data with you you can create a, a custom audience so let's say you have 10000 email ids email id database right and uh, you want to show your facebook ads to those people only those people so what you will do is that you will input an excel sheet onto facebook you know which has the details so the name surname and the and the email id is of those people and then your ad will be shown to only those people who are using facebook that's what customer file does okay just to summarize customer file option allows you to create a custom audience which consists of the people 
who ha whose email IDs are are there in the email database that you have inputted, and thus your ad will be shown to those people only. Website traffic is basically you know you can you can just call it the other word for website traffic it can be called known as remarketing. So has it ever happened to you that you go to let's say Amazon's website and uh, you you have looked for a product but you did not really buy the product you just you know close the tab at the last moment. Or let's say you went to makemytrip.com and you looked for flights from let's say Chennai to Delhi, but you never booked the, those particular flights. And then, wherever you go for the next two, three, four, five, six, seven days, you will see that particular ad itself. You know, which is prompting you to click on the ad and you know do the remaining action. Has that ever happened to you? I'm sure it has, right? So that is known as Uh, remarketing. So, what is remarketing? Remarketing or website traffic in this case is reaching out to people who have already visited your website. So, if they have visited uh, the the website in general or specific uh, pages in your website, that is also available in the custom audiences. And the last is engagement on Facebook. So, this is very so this is something which is new and something which is exciting because you can, you know, reach out to people who have engaged with your page on Facebook. right so people who have you know liked or commented or shared or your on your it's shared your post or people who have watched your videos okay people who have oh, interacted with the with your facebook canvas or people who have clicked on the lead ads you can reach out to all of these people so you know they are the those are the people who have already interacted with you on facebook right so that these are the three ways in which you can create brand awareness so customer file is what reaching out to people based on the information that you already have let's say email ids then website traffic website traffic is reaching out to the people who have already visited your website and the last is engagement on facebook which means people who have already engaged with you on facebook through liking commenting or sharing or through you know watching your videos or opening your canvas or lead ads etc okay so the next is look alike audiences you know which is which is something very very interesting So what does look alike audiences mean? So okay, let's let me read the slide first. So find new customers with look alike audiences that are based on your best existing customers that is existing custom audiences. So in the previous slide we saw how we can create custom audiences, but now through look alike audiences Facebook is encouraging us or Facebook is giving us a feature to go beyond those custom audience. So let's take an example. So let's say you input an email ID database of ten thousand people onto Facebook, and you want to show your ad to those ten thousand people. But now you want to go beyond that. You want to show your ad to much more people than those ten thousand people. But instead of creating a new campaign, you know, with uh, with uh, you know with different targeting settings, what you can simply do is that simply ask Facebook to create a look-alike audience of those ten thousand people. Now what will happen is that this new look-alike audience will be similar. to those 10000 people whose email ids are present in the list basically what facebook does is that it analyzes those 10000 people it it analyzes their you know their features the the similarities and all of that so there's a very complex algorithm at work which analyzes those 10000 people and facebook creates a new list of people who are similar to those 10000 people and then your ad can reach out to those people as well the advantage of having of, of you know being able to create a look alike audience is that the look alike audience is you know somewhat similar to the custom audience rather no, somewhat is a wrong word it's it's very similar to the custom audience and if custom audience is is someone who you know would be interested in your business there are chances that even the look alike audience will be very much interested in your business all right so that is the third way which is the look alike audience so find people who have similar qualities to your existing audience so let's say people you know website visitors mobile app users fans of your page so you already know these people and you can create a look alike audiences based on these audiences so what are the sources to create look alike audiences so people who have liked your page so your fans then people who have you know visited specific pages on your website or let's say people who have seen your videos people who have interacted with your canvas people which who have interacted with your lead ads etc Right, so these are a few sources through which you can create look-alike audiences. Yeah, so when you go to the audience uh, audience section of your manager, you can create the custom audience as well as the look-alike audience. So let me show it to you on the dashboard now. So when I go to audiences, I can click on 
you know when i click on create audience you can see there's a custom audience feature and there's a look a lookalike audience so when i click on custom audience you know this appears right so these options we already saw in the in the slide so these are the four ways in which you can create custom audience and then you can also create lookalike audience so when i click on lookalike audience for example you know it asks me for a source okay so let me let's say uh, let me select a sample source here so let's let me select this particular source so these are the either these are the custom audiences all those drop downs that you saw they are the custom audiences which we are now which we can use to create a lookalike audience so we can input a location and then depending on the audience size that we want you know we can uh, we can change the scale so when you can you know audience size ranges from 1% to 10% of the total population in a country you choose choose yeah so with 1% being those who most closely match your source so the this one per this when you click when you go to one this is the audience which is closest to your existing audience two is the audience which is slightly you know less accurate than one or slightly you know less closer than one but more more closer than all of these right so as you go ahead as you go on increasing the the audience uh, size goes on increasing but yes then, then you know they are not as closely matched to your source as 1 2 or 3 are now let's look at placements and formats so what kind of placements can we use for our ads so there is mobile news feed there is desktop news feed and then there is instagram all right so these are the recommended placement options for for this particular objective so you can go with automatic placements so when you go with automatic placements uh, uh, you know you let facebook take all the all the control and and facebook decides to show uh, to uh, facebook decides where to show your ad for maximum impact and it also keeps on optimizing the campaign in, in a real time basis or you can go with edit placements or manual placements so what is edit placements so basically you can choose you know where to where to show your ad so you can let's say if you see if you see here you can you know choose to show your ad on feeds and you can show your ads on instagram as well so you can select these options from edit placements so now let's look at budgeting and scheduling so how can we set you know budgets can we how can we schedule and other few options so you know if you see there is a there is a there is a section where you can input a budget so you can either go with a lifetime budget or a daily budget okay so this is where you actually set your budget this is where you set the optimization for ad delivery so what is optimization for ad delivery so optimization for ad delivery option basically allows you to choose the objective for which you want to optimize your ad right so do you want to optimize your ad for let's say impressions or do you want to optimize your ads for clicks whatever it is what is that you are seeking and what do you want your ad to be optimized for that is what that is that is what optimization for ad delivery is and when you get charged so when you get charged is is when you will actually you know make payment to facebook so there are different models that you can choose however for brand awareness the model is cpm so basically you used to get charged for impressions you get charged for showing your ad to people so i'll just show you on the dashboard the budget the budget section so like i said you can you can either select the daily budget or a lifetime budget for your campaign then you can choose to optimize your ad for with different options so let's say if you want your ad to create brand awareness which is recommended by the way for for this particular objective you uh, you go with this so brand awareness basically allows you allows uh, facebook to serve ads to people to people uh, to who are most likely to pay attention to your ads and reach basically is when you want to serve your ads to the maximum number of people. right so reach is more concerned about the number of people brand awareness on the other hand is concerned about reaching to the right people reaching to the people who are more likely to pay attention yeah and then there is when you get charged but when you get charged is only only impressions is available so you will get your ad will be i mean you will be get you will get charged when your ad is displayed or you will be you will get charged for impressions so as you know there is there is carousel format which is you know like a series of cards you can use different images different videos there is a single image format where you can use a single image in your ads there is a video format and then there is a slide show format so now you can use carousel ads to show variety 
the beauty of carousel ads is that there are th these are multiple uh, you know boxes or multiple cards which you can use and each card can have different content it can have so it can have different text it can have different links it can have different call to action buttons it can have different images and a user can experience the carousel like you see in the image the user can you know just click on the right and the next card will be revealed to the user right so there are different cards which can you know which can be shown yeah and each card can have different purposes so you can actually you know build a story by using these carousel ads or you can you know give a panoramic effect or you can display different products you can do various things you can use your creativity to the fullest by this particular objective sorry by by this this particular placement option you can always use single images so sim single images can you know have to be you know classy really attractive and they, they have to really have an impact on the user yeah so you can use sim single image ads to br uh, brand visually and then video ads you know one of the more, more powerful formats is video ads because people love consuming content in the in the video form these days yeah so video ads can be used to increase engagement and then slideshow so you know the advantage of slideshow is that it, it's uh, it's not as heavy as the video format slideshow is is created by using different sets of images right so if if you are concerned about the bandwidth or if you are catering to a region which does not have a higher uh, uh, you know internet speed you can always go with slideshow so now let's look at measurements so how to optimize so what kind of measurements do we need to look at if we want to optimize the brand awareness so firstly reach so how many people has our you know ad reached out to so very very simple we need to know reach for brand awareness because those are the people that we have actually reached out to as simple as that and what is the next important parameter so frequency so what is frequency frequency is the frequency with which you know one user saw this saw our ad so how many uh, sorry let, let me correct that how many times a particular user saw your ad that's what frequency is then you have video views so for video views what what kind of parameters are are necessary so the reach so how many people did your video reach out to and how many video views were there okay and then also cost per video view so these three are important the reach the the video views and cost per video views now for reach the most important parameter is obviously the number of people that we have reached out to which is the main objective of reach objective if you if you look at it yeah so the number of people that you have reached out to is is the you know is the most important number and then for post engagement you have basically the the total engagements of the post and the cost uh, cost per engagement these are the two more uh, two most important parameters to to monitor okay so now let's review and wrap up so this this module was about understanding brand awareness we started off with with uh, you know understanding why brand awareness is necessary so we looked at the funnel of of uh, awareness consideration and conversion and we looked at the importance of each of the funnel yeah and then the agenda was to understand the brand brand awareness uh, section of the whole funnel yeah then we looked at a few pre a few prerequisites so before we start what are the things that we need that are need to be that need to be established so the facebook page the url of the facebook page then you know the details of the page then just analyzing the target segment the the content that we have in in forms of in the form of creatives videos etc so that analysis is needed then we looked at the campaign objectives which help us in 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 uh, in brand awareness so we looked at the three three uh, uh, objectives yeah then we looked at a target audience so how can we target our audiences yeah so we looked at the core audience targeting the custom audience targeting and the look alike audiences we looked at the placements and formats so which placements we can use then budgeting and scheduling yeah so how 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 we can you know set up a budget and how we can optimize our ads for a particular objective then we looked at the creative so the different placements which we can use and the last is the measurement so how we can we optimize the campaign all right and you can always you know learn more through through facebook blueprint course this is all for today thank you